first off, I just need to start by saying thank you to each and every one of you for coming to this. Um, there is, there are a few words that can truly convey this. I'm going to try and take a moment uh, this morning to truly express it because it's not just gratitude, but there's something fundamentally more important than uh, than gratitude that I need to share with you. I have drank all of the death uh, ever since I found out about it. I have believed in this organization. Um, and in terms of setting the tone this morning, I want to share something with you about what this organization is all about. Um, it starts with gratitude, but it, it goes beyond that, like I said. Um, to, to truly get at that, um, I, I learned this interesting concept from a, uh, one of the War on the Rocks articles that came out about a week ago um, by uh, Brad Carson and Morgan Palmer. And it just, it, had, it wasn't from the core of the article. He just started off by asking a naive question, and I looked up what that was. And so to start off today, you know, my naive question is, why are we all here? Like, aside from the Chicago Marathon and Cubbies playoff baseball, um, and I think there's other, uh, there's a, some other conferences going on. Like, why would 100 people from across the death enterprise come to Chicago uh, on Columbus Day weekend? And I'm sure everyone here understands that it is all about the people. That is, that is at the core of what death is all about. Each and every one of you are fundamentally an integral part of this. And the community that we build off of this is our, uh, that is what our end up uh, total vision uh, for the future is. And I'll explain that in just a, a bit. For those of you who don't know how death began, what it really came down to was the two fundamental problems. Um, they, they start with people. And the first is, so emerging leaders in the defense enterprise are, are not just allowed, but they are expected to rapidly innovate in areas of high risk. Overseas, whether you are, like me, trying to find nuclear roadside IEDs or you know, uh, clear a village or uh, integrate with, uh, with airplanes overhead, you're finding a way to, to rapidly do that better because you have incredible problems, whether it's the, the limited technology or the terrain or the people that you have to overcome. And you are demanded to do that because lives are online. But then we come back to Garrison and it is the exact opposite. There is minimal risk, and there is also minimal opportunity to actually challenge that, to do something differently. The, the great phrase is, uh, that's not the way we've, we've done it. Uh, it is what it is. Whatever other hollow statement that uh, some gatekeeper likes to use to prevent people from actually uh, making this organization better, these are the things that hold it back. And the problem with that is because, so we have people that are limited in that way. But those people, the, those gatekeepers, end up becoming senior leaders. And senior leaders need to be able to shrink that, think strategically. They need to be able to think agilely, creatively. See a problem that is, that is one of these unknown unknowns in the future. The, the four plus one strategic threats that we think of right now, those are the expected ones you have to be prepared for. But as a, as a future strategic leader, you need to understand there's far more uh, that you have to be able to uh, address in an unconventional way. But we're not preparing people to do that. And we also know that just like special operations uh, warriors, you cannot rapidly create uh, or inculcate creativity and, and inno uh, innovative mindsets in people. It's not something you can pin on a star and magically become an outside the Pentagon thinker. You, you have to start it earlier. Um, and that's sort of the second part of this where uh, we have to continue to foster a spirit uh, and opportunity for people to think differently. And this is where the term, where our name comes from, why we are the Defense Entrepreneurs Forum. It's not necessarily that we're asking you to start a small business, although many people have done so, and some of the cases you'll see are about that. But at the end of the day, entrepreneurs is really just about a mentality, or entrepreneurship, for those of you who are still living and breathing in the bureaucracy. Because it's all about aligning incentives, promoting risk tolerance instead of risk aversion, and align, encouraging people to have the motivation to actually challenge something to do it better, um, to, to be willing to fail. Because if you're not failing occasionally, you aren't trying hard. You just aren't. Um, and so that's, that's sort of the problem that, that brought us all here. And over the last four years, we've gotten much better. Um, we continue to iterate our little prototype. I don't know, I don't know what the fourth letter of the, the Greek alphabet would be after, after, after alpha and beta, so if someone could, could help me with that one. Um, but you know, this being our fourth one, we're in that, that phase of this. And uh, 
each year we continue to get a little bit better at, that, at it. One thing that I can tell you we're not is we're not the opposite of good ideas. Uh, the reason for that is because we are fighting a bureaucracy, essentially. And putting a top-down hierarchical solution against the bureaucracy is going to lose every day. Uh, bureaucracies, for what, for as, as much as we you know, will speak ill of them uh, at, an or, at a place like this, they are inherently good. They were intentionally designed to be resilient for a massive uh, event, whether it's a national disaster, a nuclear weapon attack. You know, when we have to rapidly scale an organization to uh, to do something, we need to have policies and procedures in place. It has to be resilient. But on the other side of it, when there's a threat to that organization, something that doesn't fit the mold, we now have this organization that is very good at uh, resisting that change. And that's where this Sisyphean undertaking uh, really uh, come, comes out. And as author Ori Brothman has alluded to at some of our past events, we are fundamentally a, uh, we are a starfish within the spider. Um, he, he, he wrote uh, the spider, uh, starfish and spider, and he also wrote the chaos theory, or the chaos imperative. You know, us not using a centralized, top-down solution makes us even more resilient uh, than the bureaucracy itself. We are insurgents. And just like starfish, when you attack them and cut them, they, you now just have two starfish. When you push back at this organization harder, when we see more impediments to change, we just want to push even harder to improve our, our uh, defense enterprise. And with that, just like other insurgent organizations, it's just an idea that really has to take hold. Uh, one of the things you'll hear said, if you haven't heard it in the past, is that death is not a conference, it's a community. And I, I wholly, truly do believe that, because uh, all that has to permeate is an idea that we can be better, and that we don't have to be bounded by the, the constraints of reading the, reading the regulation in the most conservative way possible, um, or that we have to be bounded by a risk aversion. Our, our end, you know, the vision for change that, that DEF has as an innovation engine within the defense enterprise is culture change. It's not more, it's not more events. That, that's great, but those are just outputs, not outcomes. Outcomes is culture change. And that begins fundamentally with a community. And so that's what we're all here for. That is why we are here. And so I'm gonna take a, a pause for a second to really get at that. Um, is anyone here who, uh, who does leader development or knows about like, cognitive assessments. So the fire OB, if anyone's familiar with it, it's one personality assessment that you can take that it measures three different indicators, but one thing in particular is it measures your stress and desired measures of inclusion. And fun fact, most people uh, who take it score like I do, which is you, you want more inclusion than you express, which means that we are all plagued with the problem of showing up at a, a party where we don't know anybody standing like a fly on the wall, feeling incredibly awkward, and then like waiting 30 minutes, and then ducking out. And that, that can't happen. That's, uh, that's not how you, you build a community. So if you haven't already done so, take a, a full minute, not a, not a second or a moment, take a full minute. Start getting to know the people at your table and the other people all around. Trying to set the stage for everyone who is here. If you see someone at a happy hour earlier tonight, and they're just leaning up against the bar, or playing with their phone, like. I don't want to tell you to slap it, slap it out of their hand, but you know, introduce yourself to them. You, you know that's what's going on. If you are in that little uh, circle at happy hour talking and you see some person standing outside of it, indicate to the other two people who, you know, who are, uh, you know, to create some space so that you can invite them in because that is how you, you build a community is by inviting people in. So let's take that first step and invite each other to get to know each other. <laughs> I have 15 minutes. I'm using 
The best part about this is that every time we do this at our networking breaks, it is always going to be like this. And as incredibly annoying as it is to you have to like drum on the mic, that's the best part about it because people come here and it's a, it is a reunion it, because you have people who believe in what in the mission of death. People who passionately believe in it and are happy to be around other people uh, who are sometimes rare in this in this enterprise. And so I just want to take a minute to really share that the mission of death with each and every one of you. Uh, for those who who uh, don't you know check up on our website three times a day like I do, um, the the mission of death is to inspire, connect, and empower emerging leaders from across the defense enterprise to have an outsized impact uh, in their professions through innovation. And the, the outsized impact is pretty clear. Uh, as a captain in the army, I think I'm. I can speak for myself saying that I'm having a significantly greater impact than the 110 soldiers that I've commanded. Having this ripple effect within the, the organization is, is pretty big. And the case studies that you're going to see here today uh, are truly about that. We have uh, selected a, a well-curated list of people to truly share new ideas or experiences and case studies that they have about how they were able to have a tremendous impact at improving our profession. And that's where the, the inspiration comes from. You'll see a lot of that this morning. I, I do want to apologize uh, just due to the, the way things worked out. Um, this morning is not going to be as uh, dynamic and uh, free-flowing as, uh, say, last year's event was. I want to personally apologize, but I think you will understand how this all fits well into our, uh, into our mission for what uh, this weekend is all about. The second part of that is connecting, which you've already done and you will continue to do over the rest of this weekend because like you said, it's a community, not just a conference. And making these connections are going to last for a long time. You will continue to reach out to, to these people when you have a problem to solve. And that's what death has always been about. Um, the connections that we make, though, it's, it's twofold. It's both the people, where we are able to bridge geographic, temporal, uh, and service divides. You're not going to give me credit for being here, but you're going to do more learning about across the services than you would in six months on a joint job. Um, I'm not speaking from experience, but I'm just going to say that statistic's fairly accurate. Um, <laughs> and, and the thing about that is because as we connect, so one, of, one part of this is, is the people, getting people from across the services, the, the Air Force and the Army, the Navy and the Marines. I guess they work together more often than both. But, um, bridging those divides, we have someone here from Japan, we have someone here from uh, the UK, we have people from all across the United States, different services, civilians, veterans, uh, you name it. We are not just bridging people, but we're bridging different parts of uh, the network. And with that, as you pull these disparate parts of the network together, you also, you also bring disparate ideas. And this is where innovation truly comes from, by taking something that is conventional in one, one world and radical in another one and showing them together. Um, because of the fact that that's how innovation truly happens. That's what Google tries to do. They hire people who just have a half-formed idea, put them in a building in Palo Alto, and let them walk around until they find the other person with that half-formed idea, and then they create something amazing. And then that's the, the third part of what we get to, is empowering. Uh, there's, again, there's two pieces of this. We want to empower you to, to have that impact. The, some of the case studies you'll see are um, great examples that have come out of this. Uh, out of depth, but we're also empowering you through new lenses, skills, tools, uh, techniques you're able to, that you are able to learn here to apply to new problems within your own organizations. Uh, that's the breakouts that you're going to have later today. But then again, you can also get empowered in tomorrow's breakouts when you're actually confronting problems about talent management in Army Cyber or uh, some of the other projects that we have coming because these are, people, these are senior leaders who have asked us for your input. They want the solutions that, that we can provide. And if you're not even, and if uh, that doesn't appeal to you, you have your own side project that you've been working on, we want you to share that with us. And we want to empower you again to get that idea in front of the right people so that you can uh, have that impact. And that's where Sunday comes in, the innovation competition. Getting people and their ideas out in front of the, the stakeholders, getting the gatekeepers out of the way, 
so that we can empower them to have that change. So getting back to where I started, thank you all very much for coming. I hope you truly understand how important it is to have each and every one of you here. You are 100% the right people to be in this room right now. I am excited to meet all of you, truly. And for all of you who are streaming live or interacting with us uh, via the internet, it is great to have you here as well because that is part of the community that we are building. Without further ado, we're uh, going to get this party started. Thank <laughs> you.